Hello and welcome to my channel. Today, thanks to the kindness of my patrons, we will be looking at all the new armour and back pieces added to the game in Ender Dragons. Well, all the community has found so far, and I will share with you how to unlock them. This video is chaptered, so you can jump to the skins you're interested in, and as always, there are links below to the Guild Wars 2 wiki for each and every item shown here today. So let's tarry not and jump in to all that eye candy goodness, starting with the Ancient Canthan Ritualist set, which is unlocked as you advance through the story. You can play through the story several times to unlock all these rare skin weights, or complete the Wolvie World slash PvP reward tracks for Ender Dragons, but you can also purchase the rare and exotic versions of this set on the trading post for a steal, and if you wish to craft the exotic versions of the set, head to Shin Wei in Daego Ward on Shinji Island and he will sort you out. The only difference visually between the rare and exotic versions of this set are the particulate effects found on the exotic. I have tested the set out on all avatars and there is minimal issues with tail clipping for char players, and thankfully there are no bum flap trench coats for medium armour wearers in this set, so rejoice. Next up is the Harrier's Monastery set, recipes for which can be purchased from Xinwei again on Xingxi here, however if you lack the tokens, crafting level or patience, you can buy all the monastery gear on the trading post, both the recipes and the finished pieces. Now each crafted armour piece will set you back about 20 gold at the time of writing, and the monastery set is unusual because it shares the same armor skins across all the armor weights, and happily you only have to unlock a single weight or a single piece to unlock all the armor weights. So, for example, if you unlock the light head skin, you will also unlock the medium and the heavy, and so forth. So, that was the monastery set, and next up is the jade tech armor, recipes for which can be purchased from the Xionglai Jade Sales Associates, found next to jade bot stations, You'll need to spend some research notes and a bit of gold on these. However, if you lack the skill, resources and or will to go through all that rigmarole, you can just buy the sets on the trading post, but they will set you back a pretty penny. Quite expensive for exotic gear, 25 gold per piece. But I particularly love the medium skin headgear. That is a very broad rimmed hat indeed. I'm here for it. There are new ascended stats added in Ender Dragons here and here, but the visuals are the same as the old vanilla ascended gear, so they're getting a link down below and nothing else. Sorry guys. Okay, moving on. The final full sets we are looking at is the antique armor, which you can purchase from Myung Hee here in the Royal Court at the Xingji Monastery, but you will have to have completed the Jade Vault achievement to access her inventory. To purchase all three sets from Myung Hee will set you back 1500 Imperial Favor and 3000 Research Notes, or you can unlock this set by the End of Dragons reward tracks for both PvP and Wolby World, and you can buy all this gear on the trading post for around about 7 gold apiece. Now we're moving into the mini sets and standalone items that were added in End of Dragons. Starting with the martial arts three-piece set that is purchased from Grandmaster Chiron at the training grounds on Xingzhe. This mini set comprises of foot wraps, hand wraps, and a headband. Each piece has only one die channel, and you will need to complete the training ground heart to access Chiron's goodies. This is a great set for anyone trying to RP the Drunken Master, and if you have not seen that film, it is very old, and I am not surprised. Fans of Kunavang, rejoice, for you can now show your devotion to the beautiful dragon demigoddess with Kunavang's Festival Mask, purchased from Echo Broadcrest in Moray Village on the Echo Bar Wilds map for a few coins and some karma. The headpiece has four die channels and would make a fun addition to anyone's dragon bash get up. I have not unlocked the Aetherblade blindfold yet, I need to kind of build up my courage to tackle the Aetherblade hideout strike mission. Yes, I am a Care Bear coward. However, once you have, just head to Amazon and talk to the vendor Zazolzi, that word, there, to purchase this headpiece. Are you a Piscator? Because there is some Fashion Wars love for you in End of Dragons with the Angler's Hat 
and vest skins. You will need to complete the fishing mastery up to and including the local legend tier to access this lovely loot, which you can see I have not yet. The Salt Spray Dragon Scarf is sold by the renowned hard vendor Benyo in the Western Wilds of the Xingzhe map. It's a rather cute shoulder hugger. I would have had this already, but I'm a bit of a naughty clicker and I accidentally consumed all my tokens for the map. Now, if you are a fan of some old school Guild Wars, the demon lore specifically around Onai, or just want to have some badass demon hands, Love Done at Zaho at Grub Lane in New Kion City has replicas of both the left and right hand arms slash gloves. Now onto the new back pieces added with End of Dragons. So starting with the Antique Dragons Drape, which is an achievement reward for collecting the antique armor skins. There are two versions of the cape, one exotic, which is unlocked at tier two of this collection achievement and an ascended back piece for completing the whole set. Next up, the Traveler's Backpack, which you will need to complete the Echo Val Wilds Mastery Achievement Meta. There are 30 individual steps to get this bad boy, so don't burn yourself out trying to unlock it. The Temple Gate back skin is rewarded for completing the Jade Isle Mastery Achievement. This meta has 16 individual achievements to complete and is found here. And I personally hope this is made into a Guildhall decoration as well. More Guildhall decorations, please. Like the Temple Gate, the Water Dragon back piece is rewarded for completing the New Kaiang City Mastery Achievement. Again, it has 16 individual achievements wrapped into this meta and is a lovely tribute to Suan and just glorious to look at. Well done, art team. It's beautiful. Club Canic. So there are five backpack skins which can be purchased from Club Canic. This is how to get to the hidden club at the back of Arborstone. To unlock the Wayward Silvari's personal casino, because that is what it is, you will need to progress the story. I am honestly not sure at which point this place unlocks. I played through the whole storyline before I even noticed it was here. That's my bad. If you do know at what point in the story this place unlocks, let me know in the comments. It could well be after completion, but I'm not sure. Okay, so. All the back pieces from Canix Club are sold by the Tengu reward vendor inside the club here. So what are these skins? Well, you have the cultivated cherry blossom, the jadeite fossilized hippocampus, the jade tech back piece, and the petrified echo Val instrument, which will all set you back 1,000 Kanak coins and one gold coin. All the skins are just beautiful, great for role players, and the cultivated cherry blossom is just a must for anyone who loves bonsai. And our coins are rewarded for taking part in the mini events that happen inside the casino. But that was only four skins, and I said they were five. So the final skin for sale in the club is the Echo Valve Spire back piece which goes for 250 Kanak coins and two gold coins. But Sadly, it seems to be bugged at the moment, at least that is the consensus, and this is not the only vendor with that apparent bug. The same confusing text is found on heart vendors in Moray Village, Warden's Folly, and Brotherhood Woodlands, all offering to sell the Echo Valve Spire, but only if you already have it. I'm not understanding that either. So this makes the Echo Valve Spire effectively unobtainable at the time of writing. Now, fingers crossed, this is fixed or clarified or with some update. However, if you have managed to unlock this skin and I am completely wrong, it's not bugged, please let me know in the comments down below and please do let the people on the wiki page know as well. They will be much appreciative because at the moment I can't find anywhere on the internet that tells me how to unlock their skin. Now, sadly, this also means that the cathedral iteration slash upgrade of this back piece is also unobtainable, being a Mistforge item which requires the Echo Val Spire, along with an anthology of heroes, 250 chunks of petrified Echo Val resin, and 250 stained glass shards. So, fingers crossed, there is some clarification that these skins are beautiful. Again, I think they would make great guild hall decoration as well. They are glorious. The final armor skin I am sharing with you today is the new Elegant Canthem outfit, which is a Black Lion Gem Store skin. 
It looks fantastic on both the female and male avatar and will set you back a 700 gems or around 200 gold if you are using the game's gold to gems exchange. I love the brocade effect that the art team have managed to have with the material. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm really in love with this outfit. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. So that's my end of Dragon's Loot Showcase slash Unlock Guide. I will be making a separate video for all the Elite Specialization gear once I have unlocked all the skins. I have not forgotten them, I promise. If you enjoy this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. My End of Dragons weapon unlock guide is next on my to-do list and I have unlocked and purchased many wonderful sets to share with you. I can't wait for that. Do let me know your most and least loved new armors added in End of Dragons and any that I've missed down below. And whilst you're furiously typing, please do show some love to Arthur, why you Cody killed air come only need to do start that group and all my wondrous fantabulous patreons without whom I would be unable to dedicate the time and resources I do to my content creation especially as a disabled youtuber living with a life limiting condition your guys support is absolutely invaluable and I cannot thank you all enough if you would like to help out the channel links to my patreon page below and if you feel inspired to jump into Guild Wars 2 there are referral links down there as well for the End of Dragons expansion, as well as the free-to-play game and the Path of Fire and Heart of Thorns expansions too, thanks to the generosity of ArenaNet and their partner program, of whom I am a proud affiliate, using any of the referral links below directly supports my channel, but costs you, my dear friend, not a penny more. But sadly, we have come to the very end. So until we meet again, please stay safe, stay awesome, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.